seriously, I'm grabbing a deck. Why do you want to do a video now? Because it's time to do a video right, for the Gone Rogue game, since we're on a roll here. Appreciate everyone. Uh, we've had massive subscriptions. I don't think I've... Maybe during the early years of Rogue Deck Builder, I had like this subscriber growth. But I don't know why you idiots like my... Uh, my videos so much but i'll keep doing them as long as people like them so we're gonna do a classic kind of what we got in today talk about kind of the new business model and going back to the roots so i've been thinking and thinking and thinking about this current market and it really does remind me of almond k so i don't know why i've been panicking so much because this is the whole one of the main reasons twofold why i started this kind of the if you're not familiar it's time i guess I haven't shielded my patreon for a couple videos so might as well shield the patreon um, I started Patreon as a kind of an, a FU to Wizards of the Coast and distributors and to kind of the overall market in 2018 because we we were trying to sell a little bit online and especially when we had an overstock inventory uh, for the store, it was just something you have to do as a store to you know, clear the books, get rid of excess product that you don't use so you can actually... I mean, this is a cash flow business. You have to always have the cash flowing. Otherwise, you can't get the new stuff. And so holding on to the old stuff, if it doesn't appreciate, is just a loser's game. And that was kind of the market in 2018. And it, it's crazy how quickly we forget how bad things were because of then the insane bull market during the pandemic where everything went up in value. And, and like I remember there was like the worst of the worst of the Pokemon that had been in there for years. Is it Roaring Skies or what was the bad one, Zach? Bernie? Like, like, uh, sun and moon was really really bad well yeah there was one but everything was uh, every in Yu-Gi-Oh too every trash Yu-Gi-Oh set it evaporated and you couldn't even get anything and so it led to like me being like okay why well, do you need to be more aggressive on ordering stuff in the future and it really did bite me because then when this market crashed this had a lot of uh, excess inventory and so I think that I just need to go back to square one of what was working why are you telling me to no, oh you're telling the dog of buttons Buttons, what, what are you do doing? You See Zach, of course, now looking Sorry, at dogs. We need to start a dog channel, I guess, instead of a, a store channel. But um, so where's I going with this? So anyway, so eventually my old business model was that I was going to be more of a content creator. And then it was going to be, if I can't make any money on Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or TCGs in general, or, you know, besides what our store, what our local store can handle here. And again, it was a terrible environment too, because we'd get so ticked off. I remember we had a particular customer. They would come in and start quoting Amazon prices to me all day long. Well, that box of Omicad is going on Amazon for this much. Well, this is going for this. And like trying to guilt us into selling them uh, for that price and just, and in front of other customers too. And it just made me just want to like, like, we have some great customers, but oh my God, being in this, this industry is very very uh taxing at times with with trying to keep patience with people because some people just don't know you know what steps over the line and they don't just get kind of they don't really get it of what we need to actually like the margins we need to get to actually operate this store and that's even before even like trying to pay ourselves or grow wealth or try to grow the store i mean just to have it functioning every dollar in overhead you got to make like three dollars in sales at least it's like up to four bucks now with our margins sell like 700 boost no like 1400 booster boxes. Yeah, yeah, at the at our tiny margins that we yeah. do it. We use a lot of things as loss leaders just to try to get people in. And stores at are definitely worth it during times when the card singles are a lot hotter as we get interrupted by really the slurping now of things. What are you doing? Rude. Um, but so so I talked about this in some of the videos. Some of the best I used always used to scratch my head, and I went to scratch my head literally. Uh, that some stores, especially when I'd go and visit these stores in Provo and Salt Lake, they have these incredibly good economies with where they could tap into it. When I used to play for, or we used to uh, go to a store called Epic Puzzles and Games, we had like 40 people show up for F&M um, Standard, and there would be like one, two, or three draft pods. So there was a good 60 plus people at F&Ms, and it always used to just like bother me that the store didn't do trade-ins and they didn't sell singles. They, they did kind of, they kept like one of each in stock or two of each, each in stock if they wanted to, but they didn't actively try to like work that market. And I'm like, that's the whole reason of being a store is to be that little economy uh, when that actually makes sense. But I guess if you don't really have the mind for it, if you don't, if you're not going to keep them up with prices, if you don't have an outlet to actually sell them online when things you know get reprinted or crash, then it can be a liability and just not worth your time. And I, I could see, you know, people, I mean, I used to always like, uh, Zach and I would always, I was visiting St. George one time and it was like a Friday or a Saturday. 
And um, well, actually, let's let's bad mouth some customers here. Might as well get into it. I was actually with two of my customers, and we were at a board game convention, and they never spend money at my store. They always like they were so like greedy with their money with the, and they'd always come in with all the stuff they they'd ordered online. And we're down here at this board game convention. And we went to this. They they needed to go get something. We were out to eat, and this game store was actually close to where we were out to eat. And so like, let's just stop it and see what they have. And both of them dropped like a couple hundred bucks on things that were actually priced higher at this store than they were at ours. And I just remember being in that store, like comparatively shopping and looking at like, wow, they have everything at MSRP. I wish I could put things at MSRP. Wow, they have like, and while I was there, there were like 10, 15, 20 people that just came in and just did some like browser you know, shopping. Oh, I want this board game. I want these these sleeves. And I just went up to the, the cash register and checked out. And this is the same thing at this store. They didn't have any singles, none. They didn't sell singles. They just could rely on people coming in and just buying product at MSRP. But for the most people with owning a game store, it's that like secondary market that is so critical where you have the, the trade-ins, you have the people trying to build decks for tournaments. Like tournaments, there's another YouTube channel I was watching where they're like, oh, I don't know why I run tournaments because they're not profitable. They're not, I just kind of use it as a, this is a, a fun thing for us and stuff. I'm like, really? Because my experience is those are always pre-release days when we used to get like 30 plus people here. They were our big cash days because you sell a ton of sleeves and not only that, but people like start cannibalizing their collection to get into another pre-release. Like, oh, I didn't do well in this pre-release, let's do another one. And those were like big days for us because of the, the events surrounding it. And it's kind of crazy with this markets uh, where you always have to be kind of on top of your game with how things are changing because that's that's kind of evaporated as well. I think we're actually getting more trade-ins and less trade-ins at the same time, if, if that makes sense. We're getting more trade-ins with people just leaving the game, quitting the game, not caring about it. But a lot of people are not trading in as much stuff because it's so worthless, I've yeah. noticed. Like, people are just rather holding on to things. Yeah, when 60% of a card is still only a quarter. Yeah, they remember stuff. buying, like, a helmet with a host for 20 bucks, and now yep. it's going for four or something like that. Yeah, yeah. and, and they're like, they don't want to trade it in even though... hold on to their stuff and build a deck. And not... It's easier for them to buy cards for a deck than it is to tear apart another deck and then yeah. actually use those other cards because it's gone down so much. And I mean, it's, it's like, like, again, there's always will be this like push pull between consumer and, and, you know, buyer and seller. Right? Like one of my very favorite economists ever, I, I encourage everyone to go look up Pareto. So I believe he's an Italian philosopher and he studied, um, it's called Pareto equilibrium. It's where two, two consenting parties will continue to bargain until it comes to where neither one of them can, uh, go either way. And he his whole theory was that economic uh, theory or in then governments should always strive for this this preto equilibrium to where the you know one party is not crushing the other party and they come to this mutual agreement where neither one of them can, you know, I mean for example, what's the best possible outcome for a consumer to come in to buy this this dragon shield sleeve? It'd be zero bucks. It'd be me giving it to him for free. That would be their best possible outcome. And me would be charging a billion dollars for it. And so you start going through this bargaining process to where either where both parties under a free market system no longer want to budge more, where where party A and party B feel satisfied of the purchase, and that is where you come to like, you know, preto efficiency or put preto equilibrium. And it's like those are the type of markets that we should definitely strive for. And it, I've seen this multiple times in the Magic the Gathering market. Now, now we're looking at Orcana, where people are just so ticked off. That, oh my gosh, everything is through the roof and, and price gouging and blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, there, it needs to find its own little equilibrium and, and whatnot. So it always is like a, a guessing game of where we're at and always adjust. But anyway, long story short, back to where I was this whole thing with this video, is I definitely do want to go back to that original 2018 business model. And unfortunately for patrons, this is going to cause a little bit of uh, a headache and hiccups. Because how that worked, when, when I started in 2018, I didn't have the capital to front for like $50,000 worth of new set. So how it, it works is people had to always pre-order and give me money up front. And then I'd use that money to purchase the items. And then once the items were here, then it would be shipped. And then, you know, shipping got reimbursed and stuff. And then I got into the, the habit of like, okay, of trying to guess and be like, okay, we're going to go through 100 boxes of Baldur's Gate. We're going to go through. And that burned me. So unfortunately, we're going to go back to this where it's going to have to be like this money up front type process. And, but it still works pretty well. And it's back to the same old adage. If Wizicos is not going to allow me to make money, if my competitors online are willing to work for absolutely nothing, if they're willing to take losses, like Zach and I have speculated there's got to be some sort of money laundering going on with Pokemon because it does not make sense. It does not make sense why 
these companies that have been around for six, seven sets now and lost on all of them. Where are they making money? How are they making money? Unless they're, you know, distributors masquerading as stores, which could be a thing. But anyway, there's some shenanigans going on that does not make sense in like a fair uh, market where, you know, I buy boxes for 105 and they sell them for 93 on TCG Player. And then fees after that, they're getting like 81 bucks back after shipping and, and stuff. So they're making the, if they're buying it at my rate, they're losing 16 to 20 bucks on uh, each box, which is an absolute insanity. That's a way to go bankrupt as quick as possible. So going forward, that's what we're going to try to have to stick to and kind of roll with the punches and go back to this whole, this is still a great service. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Like if you have any, um, I, I think some of my happiest customers are people that run their own play groups because then I can, I can provide them everything. They need sleeves, they need deck boxes, they need, uh, you know, supplemental products that we can actually, uh, do that for them. And then it is a way that I stay the books clean where I don't have to go over this investment overhead and, and, and have all this crap that's just built up. And at the same time, we can, you know, still service everyone. So these are some big orders that came in for patients. We'll, we'll do this before Zach keeps giving me dirty looks of he's sick. He's sick of, sick of recording. <laughs> uh, so again, if anyone has a resume to be a Kevin's videographer, send it to me. Chloe, maybe we should just hook a camera to you. So anyway, so what has been selling? So it's still in an era of deals. Um, it is dried up. In fact, my reorders for Thronabelle or Wildsville Drain were pretty slim. Typically, I get a lot of orders at this point for people that just want more like collectors or set boosters or whatnot. But those are insanely slim. And again, it's mainly due to the fact that TC Player has them for as cheap as I do. And so you can, you know, just go and get them there. So what do we got here? So this stuff's still selling really good. This is Baldur's Gate set boosters. I would not wait on Baldur's Gate set boosters for whatever reason. Well, I know what the reason It's the video game. The video game has added a whole new demand of this product, especially, and there's inverted EV on Baldur's Gate still. So for whatever reason, I don't know if this just wasn't opened at all. I guess it wasn't. That's why it went on fire sale. Uh, the singles are starting to actually creep up. It's one of the very few things where the singles are creeping up comparatively to the box price. So don't wait on man, this product. Holy crap. How many of these have gone through? I think this is Lord Canna. It is driving yeah. this. Um, like yeah, because people like sense. to keep the backs for the ink wells for, yeah. so they like the clear sleeves. But these Dragon Steel clear sleeves, uh, I've been selling a ton, ton of them. And these look like these are all Baldur's Gate Commander decks. Again, they have, uh, I think I have a page that breaks them down. So that's what they're, I mean, whatever your gig is, more power to you. I don't want to do it. It's too much work to do so to, to really run a, again, I'm, I'm still on, on, people have asked, do you have a website? Do you have, where can I buy from you? It's like, ah. Like again, how much how much I want to kill myself for the, the the minuscule profit margins? And I get it long term that uh, but I'd rather just spend my time more wisely on stuff that that actually uh, can make more money long. I mean, again, I'm still I'm still kind of like debating about how I should. Okay, these were on sale. Speaking of things that that pre release packs used to be things that aged quite well. These are so dead now. Like I haven't seen any movement on. Like even Zeneca, you think like Zeneca Rising for these packs would be going up by now, and everything has just come crashing back down. So, um, yeah, that's basically both of these are on special. Both of these are deals. These are the type of stuff I'm selling because I guess you just have to go, you know, when distributors reprice things, they actually look like a a a pretty attractive product, comparatively speaking, to the stuff that exists uh, right now for the newer stuff. So, back in this box. Cut away from yourself. Um, oh yeah, so <laughs> these are cool. It finally came. I need to actually test these out. How interested are people with me doing like kind of box openings and product reviews? This is the Druidic Secrets from, from Ultimate Guard. It's a little bit pricey. Uh, it's just a specialty box that has stuff on it. And I believe, does this come with folders or anything? Nope, this is just gonna be the archive. So. Is that like 65, 70? Um, MSRP price, yeah. I can't remember what, like 37 my cost, I think somewhere around there for that. So these are, I think they're available. I, I did this was a test because we tried to pre-order these a long time and we never got them. And then, so that's it. Okay, let me explain something to these distributors. It's a nightmare for us with distributors because things just get lost in the, because you put in for a lot of pre-orders and then they get scrapped, they get on back order, they get put back in, they get like, it's, it, there's there's good reps, there's bad reps, there's all in between, but but it's, it must be a nightmare for them too to keep track of everything. So sometimes I pre-order stuff, it doesn't come in and then I see it's available uh, in stock again. If you are ordering for me, the best thing to me is just keep an, a massive open line of communication with me and I can keep checking. It doesn't bother me 
um, don't think you're like you're you're bugging me to 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 continue to ask about the these sort of stuff because yeah, I just happened to look at this again and saw that it was finally back in stock. So these are kind of cool though. I mean, there's archives with little little things on them, but um, sales as far as accessories are still strong. They're as high as ever. So again, I don't really think we're in this horrible of a market as people think. I think that we're just in a like I've stated a billion times like overprinting is just through the roof. So yeah, they won't quit printing this crap. So this is the thing again. Go watch the um, roller coaster that this product has been under. And this is why I, I highly, highly discourage people on making, you know, speculation based upon current prices and stuff. You never know. Like I was looking at double, uh, double feature and double feature has a insanely uh, positive EV. So uh, inverted EV. Rares, though, yes. Right? Yeah. So if you actually uh, buy double feature and open it up and hopefully the distributor I just ordered from will actually honor. So I really you know, order from this distributor. I have her back from them. Oh, I'm going to have to call them and bug them 7,000 times before they decide to process the order. Um, yeah, so, but I even discourage people, like, they could just reprint, decide they want to reprint um, Double Feature. And that's why I'm pissed off about Pokemon right now, because they just did a Chilling Rain reprint Seriously? for Elite Trainers. Why? Why, Pokemon? Why? It's not, like, you're... These companies, Pokemon and Magic, need to realize their greatest competitor is not each other. It's not Magic. It's not Lorcana. I mean, it kind of is to, I mean, sales to them, take away for them. Their greatest competitor right now is their dead products that currently sit on the shelves. That is why they're getting less reorders. So why do something like Chilling Rain? Why? Is there really demand? Packs are still nothing. Yeah, maybe there's some demand for elite trainers. But it's like they're, they're, they're going out of their way to make sure that products never ever go up to MSRP because Chilling Rain, we're not even asking for Chilling Rain to have this like high speculative value of being like a hundred dollars in ETP. I would just love to sell an ETP for once in my life for like MSRP of what they, you know, decent margins. And yeah, Chilling Rain got a reprint. The weirdest thing with like Lost Origins, they did sleeve booster reprints. Pokemon makes no sense to me why they decide. And they, these might not be reprints. These might be something they have in warehouses somewhere. Yeah. And then they're just you like, okay, we're going to give these back to distributors. So... So anyway, there's a lot of Warhammer. I think uh, one of my patrons is taking a gamble on the Warhammer. I'm just tired of trying to grab Warhammer. It's like, through there, yeah. Well, that's probably there. There might be some inverted EV. This is all Baldur's Gate. So, yep. Uh, I, I've had a couple of patrons that made a pretty good penny. It's a lot of work breaking them down, though. That's the little thing with me that I don't. I don't know if I want to. Kind of go down that route. Once we get sixty percent of our, our, our single sorted. Well, again, and it's like, like I know people are like, well, you can hire an employee. You can. Ugh, that is such a headache. I've tried. You end up micromanaging more than they do work. Wow, um, nobody will touch singles. That's the problem. Well, I don't want to sort singles. I want to do fun stuff. Well, it's you yeah, like I know. That. I know. Oh, yep. Uh, yep. That's the, the the thing. The reality of a game store is there's infinite amount of work. Like you can always find work. But there's, again, a big balance between burning yourself out to where it's worth it and where it's not. Is it really worth it? Like, the main things that make money can be done in a day, like, in the main part of the day. And then everything after that's like, well, I could, but will I kill myself? What is it worth it at this point to... Oh, these are kind of cool. These these boulders that are coming out. These druidic Ooh. boulders. So it looks like, yeah, more boulders get off to figure out what's all in here. So... Yeah, it's not the, the most exciting order, but yeah, it's just, this is where the money's moving at the moment, um, is things that are on, basically on bargain, on sale. Well, and I, I'm really wondering how much of the commander decks are going to go up, because that's, it's so hard to open them in booster packs. Yeah, cool, you can get them from collectors. Yeah, and yeah I don't think there's as, as much mass box openers or collectors. Obviously not, because collectors used to run out, so they had a different, besides Kamigawa, that was the exception, they used to have a different policy uh, for collector's boosters that they weren't going to, like, there were, like, core 2021, they didn't do a reprint on them, and yeah. they shot up the value. They just didn't. They just stopped. And But they did for Theros. That was a weird one. And they did for um, Ikoria. And so, yeah, it's it's you can never know with distributors. But, I mean, the main thing was is things like Kamigawa, Baldur's Gate, um, even Brothers War, new, uh, not for X, that one was opened up. Domineer United, uh, those those collector boosters, they weren't open in high quantities. So I think that yeah, Commander cards actually have a chance of going up. 
Like that's kind of weird too that they're going to put commander cards in collectors and sets. Well, there, there's there's commander cards that are only in like set and collector boosters now. Well, they actually. did that with, yeah, oh, with yeah, the a couple the sets. Yeah, that yeah. was that was Baldur's. There's Baldur's and uh, think of it. It's just so weird how to find yeah, stuff. I so can't keep track anymore. well, and that's what happens in this market is no one knows. Like the masses don't know where they're at. So then it 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 does add for these unique times where it's like, wow, these cards are expensive. I saw one the other day for Jumpstart. Like uh, there's Jumpstart um, Martian Machines probably has a positive. EV in it because there's some cards in there because there's some commons on commons and commons are only in those jump starts oh, that gosh. shot up and you know you can get them from set boosters and collectors boosters but again those are two our march of machines is two places that people aren't touching collectors yeah. and sets at the moment so then you know people looking for these these cards to finish out their collections or put them in commander decks or however these people play, play them then they have the opportunity of actually going up but anyway i think that's a pretty good video for today if anyone has any topics that you want to talk about um or if you want to send Chloe a treat, chicken nuggets. You don't need treats, Chloe. You're fat. She's getting so skinny because we go walking every day. Great. What happened? You're so great. Because she's old. What are you doing, Bruce? Quit aging, Chloe. Bruce, let's go. Anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow. You're lazy.